Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I am joined by my esteemed co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Uh, and today we are interviewing the uh, Bitcoiner Wasabi researcher and contributor, uh, Nothing Much. Uh, so today, how are you doing, sir? Uh, hi, uh, I'm good, thanks. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was too lazy to put in my real name on the on the Zoom, but uh, for what it's worth, my uh, actual name is or given name is uh, Yuval, so that, that's also fair game. Yeah. Okay, well, so thanks, thanks for clarifying. I wasn't sure if you wanted to, you know, use it or not. Basically, you never know. So, okay, also yeah. I can call you Yuval. That's brilliant. Uh, well, in that case, uh, we'll yeah get straight into it essentially um, with the pod, uh, as everyone knows. Um, so yeah, what, what I like to do is, uh, as you may have realized from other podcasts is, um, at the beginning of the podcast to go into the beginning of you as a person so that we can kind of understand what makes you tick and where you came from, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, uh, obviously one of the things that you're working on is, is, uh, with Wasabi wallet and, um, Bitcoin privacy. Um, and so I, I guess the question I wanted to ask you first off is how, in the very beginning, did you get into programming in the first place? Like, what's the story behind that? I suppose, like, how did you work out that was something you were interested? In? How did it come to you? How did you learn that like, that kind of thing? Uh, on on some level, like, uh, I think it traces back to like being obsessed with Legos as a kid, uh, and later like being exposed to video games and like. I, I barely remember anything at all about the games, but one thing I remember like super vividly is this game editor that my friend brought once and uh, like just tweaking the values like that that are there behind the scene and realizing like um, there's like a latent model there that that you know is is concrete uh, and it's not magic. So I, I kind of tried to to force my dad to to learn to program and and that didn't work too too smoothly uh this was like the the mid 90s and um he he like we we tried it, it didn't really work but then a few years later um i started like i i got online and and started like using view source and cargo culting javascript and um and i guess the the big transformative moment uh was uh so we were living in Israel at the time, and uh, my parents had Macs uh, for like reasons uh, that they traveled and stuff, and didn't realize it was a really obscure thing in Israel. And so I was in this like um, island, isolated. All my friends had PCs, and and uh, I didn't have uh, very much to to do. So uh, like my one source of of stuff was. Um, Mac Addict magazine had like CDs uh, with stuff on it, uh, just shareware and freeware and stuff like that. And and one of the CDs had uh, Mac Pearl on it. And um, I think I basically learned how to program from the the Pearl documentation. Uh, and and then when I I actually got internet access, um, like this really accelerated the Pearl community was like super supportive. Uh, I got into open source and like it was never really a decision. It it kind of just happened on its own that like uh, I, I yeah I, I can't really trace it to, to some specific uh, event. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I uh, uh, wrote a lot of like crap Pearl code and um, uh, and then like years later. Uh, I kind of got tired of programming. I felt like it was a bit meaningless, and then uh, uh, Bitcoin kind of screwed me up and, and convinced me that, like, uh, actually, I am optimistic about this stuff after all. And uh, that's interesting. Like, I um, because yeah, I try to think. Because I remember my first. I had like a Windows ninety eight PC. I think would be my first ever computer I had access to. So um, yeah, I guess I would have found like someone at that age. I would have found someone having a, having a Mac like kind of strange and, and and out there for me. I guess so. Um, yeah, kind of can understand. Um, but I suppose uh, you obviously you you learned from these. Did, 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 is it something that they um, that, that you learned? Like, did, was there any mention of programming at all in school, or was it something that was just entirely 
not because I know for myself it was like we learned how to Google and like how to set a password and that was kind of like that was an or like database I think we'd like Excel and stuff like that and that was basically kind of it I, I don't know was it different for yourself or, or was it literally just like purely self like uh, interest self-taught self-driven so by the time I already realized I was super interested in this um like all we had was like typing lessons uh this was like 94 or 95 or something like that uh so like they they were teaching us to type touch type on like old dos machines just doing like you know uh spelling drills or something like that um not much at all about like how to actually use computers um uh, but by this point i was already like uh learning uh, from friends at the, at the time we were living in the States. Um, and there, uh, I did have some access to like friends with, uh, like older brothers and stuff who had, you know, some cool things to, to say. I think it was only by like uh, seventh grade or something that I actually started, uh, like learning how to program, uh, and maybe eighth grade actually. Um, and only after I'd already started uh, did we get like um, I think Google came out like ninety eight or something, uh, and and that became a thing, uh, and they started teaching us like computer literacy stuff, which included like Excel and stuff. But um, yeah, it was uh, um, primarily I guess self driven in in that regard. So obviously, as you said, you you lost interest in in, in programming and. I, I guess because I guess it's that classic thing for like the human mind where it's like you want something that you really have to build or you know will make like a big difference if you help build it or whatever. And obviously that's lacking. Um, and so I guess you go through school and part-time jobs, whatever the ordinary stuff. So like, when did you come across, um, like when did you come across Bitcoin? And, and I suppose um, the question there is like, what did you think about it when you first read about it and encountered it uh, and kind of what, what stuck for you specifically? Because it's, it's always different for people, like the, whether it's the design or the philosophy behind it or the economics. So what was it for you that kind of stuck? Well, my dad's a mathematician and he attended a lecture. I think it must have been like 2002 or something like that um, by a uh, famous cryptop cryptographer, uh, Adi Shamir. Uh, I think it was something like how to spend a penny online or, or something like that. Um, and then he, he came back home and, and just told me about like a bunch of cool stuff like uh, uh, blind signatures and link uh, linkable ring signatures and the double spend problem. And uh, so I was, you know, already, I, I think I was 17, kind of, you know, vaguely aware of, of um, like the problems in the space and uh, already like super interested in you know um what decentralized money could could do um and um and then a few years later i was running my own mail server and i uh, uh, uh learned about uh, hashcash from uh like a spam assassin um and I, I didn't have a like reverse dns uh like a proper reverse dns entry um so to like reduce my uh, mail servers uh, spam scores uh, on the assumption that you know the other side is also running a uh, spam assassin uh, like hashcash was actually uh, a fairly uh, effective uh, thing um, so um, by the time Bitcoin came around of course I was an expert I knew everything and I knew that obviously it wouldn't work because you know this very long list of reasons why it's you know not fit for purpose and <laughs> Uh, so I completely dismissed it offhand um, as, uh, as stupid. Um, and then um, I think that was when it, it got on Slashdot. Um, and then uh, a while later, I, I had a friend ask about um, this stuff. I think this must have been like 2012 or something, because uh, he was asking about um, the Silk Road and whether or not, like, uh, he, he wanted to buy wheat, basically. And and uh, so I looked into it a little bit more seriously, and I, I uh, started trying to, like, figure out, okay, well, how do you compile this crap? And uh, 
or maybe that was earlier. Um, so that that was a, a source of friction. And then I, I uh, told him like, look, we're going to have to buy it. It's too late to mine it. Because uh, uh, people were already like starting to use GPUs and stuff. And uh, this means like wiring money to some shady thing in Japan. And, and like the forum is full of scammers. And, and uh, also like what you hear about it being anonymous, that's like total bullshit. Uh, so, like, I just told him, like, look, this is a bad idea. Uh, don't do it. Um, and then in 2013, I have this, like, Facebook status where, um, like, uh, the pirate party um, posted a guy, um, like, he got a letter from the bank saying that they're going to close his account because he's dealing with uh, Mt. Gox. And, you know, completely arbitrarily. Um, and um, and and I think that was like a light bulb moment. And like I, I don't remember doing this, but like my my status from from that time says like finally a, a good reason to be interested in Bitcoin or something like that. And uh, um, so I guess uh, I, I kind of started you know uh, realizing this thing is is more interesting than I initially thought. And um, Unfortunately, I didn't do anything about that. Uh, I didn't have a computer at the time. I was uh, like uh, by, by this point kind of out of the loop uh, from from like software things. And um, and then uh, like late 2015 or something, I uh, uh, dropped out of school for various reasons and, and reluctantly took a, a software job again. And um, uh, and uh, at this point, this was with the benefit of of the Snowden revelations in hindsight, which kind of you know confirmed a whole bunch of stuff that uh, I suspected was true, and um, I guess really reaffirmed my uh, distrust of uh, governments. Um, and um, and then a coworker was uh, uh, like had a, a bit of Bitcoin he wanted to get rid of because he thought it was a bad investment, and I was like. Okay, maybe if if I just buy it off him, I'll finally have uh, uh, forced myself to to properly learn about it. And um, yeah, I think I haven't slept properly since. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it was uh, I guess um, about a year of of uh, distracting myself with various uh, other cryptocurrencies to you know try and figure out because the privacy story and the whole smart contract bullshit, like getting to the the bottom of, of those things and realizing, okay, actually, uh, like Bitcoin is uh, certainly not superseded. And even if it had been uh, improved upon in, in technical, uh, like various technical attributes, um, that like the network effect, the fairness of the launch, the like, um, uh, a priori definition of like the monetary rules, even though I, I have some issues with them, um, like all of that seemed to, to on the whole, be a, a much stronger argument for uh, uh, focusing on that and, and being interested in that. And uh, uh, and yeah, it just you know kind of gave me like I was really um, underwhelmed with the level of accountability in software, like by, uh, 2010 or so, I just felt like, a, uh, basically like a, a bureaucrat's enforcer. Like I build, you know, unaccountable bureaucratic systems that just do things. They, they affect the, you know, the social, the physical world. They, they, um, uh, control the flow of resources and time and, and power distribution in society to some extent, and I'm getting compensated. And I don't see like th there's a disconnect between what I'm getting paid and, and the value that I think I'm, I'm contributing to, to society. Um, and I was, you know, really disenchanted by the, the whole software industry and um, Bitcoin kind of convinced me that uh, actually, like open source is not just some sort of uh, reputational whitewashing scam for for the industry to like pat itself on the back and tell itself it's it's a pro social thing. Like th this is something that actually can have uh, a meaningful like political impact on on the way uh, power 
works in society um, precisely because money is is kind of like a proxy for for how we we manage resources. Uh, I, I like to think of it as sort of a, a protocol for just communicating uh, under information asymmetry about like what we should all collectively be doing. Uh, if like markets are a protocol, uh, then like money itself is is like the the packets of information flowing through that protocol. Um, or, or another perspective is a kind of like distributed memory. Uh, and if these things are not trustworthy, um, if they're so subject to like discretional, uh, sorry, discretionary uh, um, like changes in policy and, and, uh, and these things have um, these uh, obviously negative effects on, on society and, and how we manage our, our, our problems at scale, um, then we need a kind of reset, and um, uh, and and Bitcoin seemed like it was actually um, principled and 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 uh, uh, convincing enough to like establish that basic trustworthiness, uh, despite its technical limitations. And at the time, I, I became much more aware that you know the the technical limitations that uh, I initially thought were you know. Uh, unworkable actually turned out to be uh, far less of a problem than than I had previously imagined. So, um, yeah, I guess that's that's kind of my my journey to to caring and um, and privacy seems like the most, uh, or at least for me personally, it's the most urgent problem to 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 work on. I wanted to ask, what are your thoughts about the recent chain analysis leak? Um, where they claimed that they're able to demix Monero and that they were running their own nodes to surveil the Bitcoin network. And they even had like a block explorer built for surveillance. So the wallet explorer issue, I was actually, uh, just to be clear, I'm not a hundred percent caught up with, with that story, but um, like wallet explorer was written by a guy who later went on and got hired. And I, I think that was fairly well known. Uh, it was also well known that uh, maybe not chain analysis specifically, but various uh, companies uh, run uh, Electrum nodes and Bitcoin nodes to try and localize uh, transaction propagation and do various other things. Um, more generally, it's um, uh, like Bitcoin Core specifically and, and the Bitcoin ecosystem in general has um, uh, privacy leaks at the network layer. So um, I guess it was a kind of knowledge blindness where like to, to me, it seemed like obvious that this was going on. And um, um, I mean, it's, it's nice to have uh, concrete proof that this is, you know, that they, they actually admitted to to doing that. Um, I think it also um, helps to highlight the 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 fact that, like, even if you have um, uh, on the base layer um, uh, strong cryptographic assurances like Monero has, uh, that's not enough if you account for like a more holistic model for privacy that also account for you know met metadata leaks um through the the, the network layer or uh temporal patterns and, and so on and so forth so um in, in this regard like it I, it wasn't really a surprise but i'm i'm glad that it happened because i think it helps to to you know elevate the the discourse and um um so yeah not 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 much i i, I think that the drama was uh was a, a little bit overblown, um, but um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 an adversarial situation. There's, I mean, it's a huge business model for for these companies to basically sell the service of uh, pseudo scientific narratives um, that that are then used to to justify um, like violent enforcement in some situations and. Um, it's it's just I don't think it's morally justifiable, uh, even if it were effective at preventing crime, which it really doesn't appear to be. So, um, so yeah, uh, I, I guess that's my my take on it. Okay.